Welcome to Tabletop Gaming Guild. Tabletop Gaming Guild is all about the experiences and memories of playing tabletop games with friends and families can create. Today we're looking at Mountains Out of Mole Hills, designed by Jim DiCamillo and Pat Marino and published by The Op. Mountains Out of Mole Hills is a family weight program movement game for up to four players. In Mountains of Mole Hill, you are going to be taking your moles and using cards to move them around on the underside of the board, causing mole hills to appear on the top side of the board. If you ever move into a position that already has a token on it, you're going to put your token underneath that token. The important thing is when you score, you're going to score for every stack and every piece in the stack that for which your piece is on the bottom because molds are always looking up. So control is determined by bottom of the stack. The first thing that's going to happen each round is you're going to draft your movement cards. Players are going to take turns selecting one card at a time from the draft pool until all players have four cards and then all the remaining cards go away. You would then select the order in which you want to use those cards. So you'll make a little deck and lock that in. Then in turn order you would reveal one card at a time and do the action. The key thing of that, though, is you don't know what other people selected and they could unintentionally or intentionally interfere with the cards you chose. There's not that many different cards to worry about in this game. We'll go over each one. There are the basic movements, forward movements. There goes a one, two, or three movement. There are cards that allow you to turn left or right, and you do have to make sure you are turning the correct direction based on where your mole's nose is facing. And usually you can move one space before or after that turn. Some cards allow you to turn 180 and then move or move and then turn 180. Some of them just, just give you a straight turn and no movement. There are two special cards, one of them being a rock, which there's one rock in the game that anytime somebody plays a rock card, they can either place it if it's not on the board or move it if it's already on the board. If anybody ever runs into this rock, they have to roll the randomized movement die and their movement is converted into whatever turn the die says, which can really mess with their programming. Now stacks of pieces can topple on their own if they reach a certain height. The height limit is determined by what round of play it is. However, if you play the topple card, you can topple it early. Let's build up one of these stacks just for example. When we topple a stack, you get to choose which way it topples. The base would always stay in the space. Then in the direction you topple, you would remove one piece and put it in the new location until all those pieces are placed. Go Always going from bottom to top of the stack. The key thing in that is it may give you control over new areas but it may also add points to other players if you're not careful. At the end of the round, you would do scoring, and the turn order for the next round would be determined by who has the most pieces on top. So that's another reason why toppling may be important to help you alter the turn order, even if it causes you to lose points because your stack is shrunk. And that's all the rules for Mountains Out of Mole Hills. It's a simple, fun game. The three-dimensionality gives it a lot of table presence, as well as makes you think in a way that's different than a lot of games. You really have to think spatially, and the program movement means you have to plan ahead, but also plan for what other players are doing. So you're definitely taking in consideration other people's actions. And being ready for potential curveballs thrown into your plan. Overall, it's a really fun game, easy to teach, easy to learn. The strategy is simple but fun, and it takes only about 45 minutes to play, so worth picking up, worth giving it a try, especially if you have a family with teens and preteens. And younger players could probably still enjoy this if they are teamed up with you know, some older children or adults. Thank you again for watching. Please join us again on YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, and other social medias. And please don't forget to like and subscribe.